these do not occur in options given are frog, cow, camel, cockroach. So let's see, uh, let's start with the options. So we have frog, cow, camel. Okay, you know frog is an amphibian. Cow and camel are mammals. So mostly all are, all come under mammals. So, I'm sorry, uh, cow and camel come under, come under mammals. Frogs come under vertebrates. But cockroach comes under arthropoda. And uh, the specific character of cockroach is that it has hemolymph. Hemolymph. So, what is this hemolymph? This hemolymph is a fluid basically that is white in color. So like when we dissect a frog, we can see that there, are, there is no red blood. There is just white consistent fluid in its whole body. So there are small cells. They are, not, they are hemocytes. Hemocytes. That is their blood cells. But they do not contain any hemoglobin. No hemoglobin or any other oxygen pigment to carry oxygen. The simple function of this fluid is to carry food nutrition throughout the body. So it does not do any oxygenation function. So RBCs are not required here. The primary function of RBCs in mammals and other uh, vertebrates is to basically supply oxygen. But since there is no requirement of oxygen here, there is no RBC here. Instead, there are just cells that constitute the whole fluid. But how does oxygen supply to the uh, arthropoda uh, that is cockroach go? So when we turn the cockroach that is to the other side of the cockroach, we have small spiracles okay, through which the direct oxygen enters. And this diffuses throughout the body and hence the oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged. So let's look at the solution. The blood of cockroach do not contain RBCs as it is in fact the blood but hemolymph which has some unpigmented free cell in the plasma known as hemocytes which have nothing to do with transport of gases or respiration. So the answer is cockroach. cockroach. The next question. Blood pressure in pulmonary artery, the options given us, is same as that in the iota, is more than that in the carotid, is more than that in the pulmonary vein, is less than that in the vena cava. So let's consider artery. So as a generalized fact, we know that artery always has more pressure than vein. The reason is we have the structure of the heart here. So there are four compartments. So the iota is the main artery and then it splits into various other arteries. So we have the carotid which is also arising from the iota. So uh, uh, iota is the major artery and carotid is also an artery. So here this is the thickest part of the heart. It has more musculature. Since it pumps blood the pressure is exceedingly more than in the vein. Okay, So the pressure of artery is always greater than the pressure of the vein. So since it's an artery it should be always more than the pulmonary vein. So they have given the names to confuse us. So this option is right less than that of the vena cava. Vena cava is the vein. So this fact is right. So we have to look for artery and vein difference. Arteries have higher blood pressure than vein because the blood is forced inside them from the heart and also their nar uh, lumen is narrow. We also, we also know that artery has a narrow lumen due to thick muscle wall than the veins. Veins have a larger lumen. So the answer is C more than that in the pulmonary vein. Blood pressure in the mammalian iota is maximum during. The options given are diastole of the right ventricle, systole of the left ventricle, diastole of the right atrium, systole of the left atrium. So we know that the same heart structure here 
so approximately my iota is from here so the major thing that contributes to the blood flow into the iota is due to the systole of the left ventricle only so that only causes the maximum pressure in the iota so the answer is systole of the left ventricle the walls of the left ventricle is thickest of all chambers here we told that its musculature is more it supplies oxygenated blood throughout the body iota arises from the left ventricle and the musculature is best developed so the answer is systole of the left ventricle causes the maximum blood pressure next question doctors use stethoscope to hear the sounds produced during each cardiac cycle the second sound is heard when option a ventricular wall vibrate during uh, vibrate due to gushing of in of the blood from atria semilunar valves close down after the blood flows into the vessels from ventricles av node receives signals from sa node av valves open up so let's eliminate a few options we know nodal conduction we must know that nodal conduction nodal conduction nodal conduction does not contribute to any sound it only contributes to the transfer or conduction of impulses from atria to ventricles so the nodal functions can be completely avoided ventricular wall vibrate due to gushing in of the blood from atria this is also not a fact the sounds are basically due to the semilunar valves so only the valves create the sound so the second sound is due to the semilunar valve closing so let's look at the explanation the second sound heard by doctors using stethoscope occurs when semilunar valves close down after the blood flows into the vessels from ventricles so the answer is semilunar valves close down after the blood flow into vessels from ventricles this is contribution of the second sound which one of the following animal has two separate circulatory pathways okay so the options given are lizard whale shark frog we know so this is a correlation between the animal kingdom chapter and circulation so we have to know we have to find out uh, from the fact that we know if we have four ventricles as in mammal as in mammals only mammals four ventricles one will lead as in humans one will lead to the oxygenated blood to parts of the body parts of the body and the other will carry the deoxygenated blood and oxygenate it for example in us from the lung the deoxygenated blood goes into the left ventricle so that what that's what happens so this is the two separate pathways so this is present only in mammals so we have to look for the mammal here lizard is not a mammal shark and frogs are also not mammals so the only mammal here is whale so the solution is whale whale is a mammal it has four chambered heart having two atria and two ventricles oxygenated and deoxygenated blood flow in separate circulatory pathways they do not mix how do parasympathetic neural signal affect the working of the heart options given are reduce heart rate in cardiac output heart rate is increased without affecting the cardiac output both heart rate and cardiac output increase heart rate decreases but cardiac output increases so uh, let's look at the solution we have the para and the sympathetic so sympathetic acts through the depressor center Symp uh, i'm sorry parasympathetic acts through depressor center uh, the depressor center in the middle of lung ta and sympathetic acts through accelerator center so the depressor center what it does is it releases acetylcholine ach and then it decreases the heart rate cardiac output and also the venous return but sympathetic generally increases the heart rate cardiac output and venous return okay so parasympathetic generally reduces both heart rate and cardiac output control of heartbeat by nervous system middle oblongata has two regulatory centers as we told before 
accelerate our centaur. Its function through parasympathetic nervous system and increases the heartbeat by secretion of epinephrine or adrenaline. Adrenaline and depressor center it functions through parasympathetic nervous system by secretion of acetylcholine ACH it decreases the heart rate speed of conduction or action potential thereby the cardiac output is also reduced so the answer is reduce both heart rate and cardiac output moving on to the next question the diagram given here is a standard ECG of a normal person P wave represents so we have to know we will first give the explanation of each wave and then we will go to the options. So we know this is the, we should know that this is the depolarization of atria. QR is represents to the depolarization of ventricle. Okay. So this is the P, Q, P and QRS complexes representation. Okay. So let's look at the options. Initiation of ventricular contraction beginning of systole end of systole contraction of both the atria so zone uh, here the pv represents the contraction of both iota you know it's the depolarization or contraction the pv represents the electrical excitation or depolarization of the atria which leads to contraction of the both atria the qrs complex represents the depolarization of the ventricles initiates the ventricular contraction the contraction starts shortly after q and marks beginning of the systole so the answer is contraction of both the atria so moving on to the next question bundle of his is a part of which one of the following organs in human you know bundle of his this is the left ventricle i'm sorry left atria left ventricle right atria right ventricle we know this is the septum that separates heart and there is the AV node here SA node AV node here and then conduction occurs and here for the impulses to go through the heart we know this is the bundle of fibers which are the conductory fibers so this is specific to heart of the out of the options brain heart kidney and pancreas the answer is heart bundle of his are typical cardiac muscle fibers question arteries are best defined as vessels which ox option a supply oxygenated blood to different organs break up into capillaries which reunite to form one visceral organ break up into capillaries which reunite to form a vein carry blood from one visceral organ to another visceral organ so let's reject a few options and then we'll look into the confusion option supply oxygenated blood to different organs this might seem right but let's look at an example of pulmonary artery it does not carry oxygenated blood but it carries only deoxygenated blood so this can be ruled out carry blood from one visceral organ to another visceral organ so arteries carry blood from one organ to another but not necessarily uh, like even it all carries even to the cells so let's look at two other options break up into capillaries which reunite to form one visceral organ break into capillaries which reunite to form a union so both of these are confusing but then as with the best defined best definition we know that capilla uh, arteries end up into capillaries and the capillaries again form veins and then which will end up in a heart heart is one visceral organ so it forms one visceral organ so the best option is break up into capillaries which reunite to form one visceral organ moving on to the next question which one of the following statement is correct regarding blood pressure 130 bar 90 mm hg is considered high and requires treatment 100 bar 55 is considered an ideal blood pressure 105 bar 50 mm hg makes one very active option d 90 bar 110 mmhg may harm vital organs like brain and kidney so this is the systolic and this is the diastolic pressure so when diastolic pressure is really high it has to be lesser than 80 or 90 and if it is more than that it leads to hypertension or high blood pressure so we have to look at the option where the diastole is really high so the answer is 110 which may harm vital organs and like brain and kidney because 
when there is increased pressure it can lead to many other complications so the solution is 90 bar 10 mm hg may harm vital organs like brain and kidney this is called hypertension which can give rise to increased heart rate and palpitation so the option is 90 bar 110 mm hg which may harm vital organs like brain and kidney given below is the ecg of a normal human which the ecg is not given here so which one of its component in humans is correctly interpreted below complex qrs is one complete pulse peak t initiation of total cardiac contraction of peak p and peak r together systolic and diastolic blood pressures initiation of left arterial contraction is peak p so looking at the sol solution we know the p represents the contraction of arteria QRS represents contraction of ventricles following the contraction of arteria. So we have to look from this perspective. So P, P and R together systolic and diastolic blood pressure. So this is the P, the QRS complex. So this is P, Q, R, S. So the peaks represent the systolic and diastolic blood pressure so the answer is option c peak p and peak r together systolic and diastolic blood pressures if due to some injury the cardiac tendine of tricuspid valve of human heart is partially non-functional what will be the immediate effect so option a the flood uh, the flow of blood into aorta will be slowed down the pacemaker will stop working the blood will tend to flow back into the left atrium the flow of blood into pulmonary artery will be reduced so, so let's look at the solution so we have the picture of the heart here so we know this is the right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle so the cordate tendine cordate tendine is present in the it's present near the ventricles it's a set of muscles which hold together the valves so these this connection is present so okay so if these muscles are damaged then the valves will also not be able to completely close so this will affect the flow of blood into pulmonary artery so we have to look for the option which says that so the flow of blood into pulmonary artery will be reduced tricuspid valve is the valve in the heart which is between the right atrium and the right ventricle the valve allow opens to allow the blood from the atrium into the ventricle thus if tricuspid valve is partially non-functional functional then the flow of blood into pulmonary artery will be reduced so if this muscle is damaged the valve will also not be able to be functional properly so the flow is reduced so the option is the flow of blood into pulmonary artery will be reduced in a standard ecg which one of the following alphabets is correct representation of respective activity of the human heart so the options given are s yes, start of systole option b t end of diastole option p depolarization of arteria option r repolarization of ventricle so we know from the last question uh, last discussed questions the solution is option c which is the depolarization of arteria in the p wave it's a small upward wave positive wave that indicates the depolarization of the arteria this is caused by activation of sino sinoatrial node so the option is depolarization of atria in humans blood passes from post caval to diastolic right artery uh, right atrium of the heart due to option a pushing open of venous valve suctional pull stimulation of sinoauricular node pressure difference between the post caval and the atrium so let's look at the solution we know that you know when it's post caval it represents to the vena cava to the diastolic right atrium of the heart so it is from vein to the atrium how does this occur so this is the heart we know the oxygenated blood goes through contraction so it it is pumped out but here when the when the veins have to come here it's not uh, there is no any other organ which uh, pumps the venal blood into the heart it's only the suctional pull that is when this opens like when the atria dilates you know the blood pumps out so this is called suction like when you are sucking a juice out of the straw so when we dilate our mouth 
the fluid tends to move into the mouth. This is the same principle that is employed here. So it's suction pull. In human blood passes from the post cable which is from vena cava to the diastolic right atrium of the heart due to suction pull. Thank you for watching the video.